On today's episode of Let's Talk Drones, we're taking a look at the DJI 04 Air Unit Pro. I know I'm a little late to the game on this one, but you know what they say, better late than never, so let's talk drones. What's up? It's Chris, the Drone Geek, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Drones. I am on a bit of a time crunch. I've got just about 25 to 30 minutes left of daylight here in Paducah, Kentucky. I am in Noble Park, and I'm really excited to be here because it is a big, wide open area, and it's perfect for flying the Pavo 20 Pro by Beta FPV around. Really excited because I just outfitted the Pavo 20 Pro with the DJI 04 Air Unit Pro. So we got a dual pro situation going on here. Again, I know I'm a little late to the game, I just got the O4 Air Unit Pro about a week ago. Haven't had the chance to really dive into it the way I would have liked. And then just yesterday, I got a notification in my email that the DJI O4 Air Unit Lite, O4 Air Unit, uh, just arrived to my house as well. So I'll be excited to get back to North Central Pennsylvania to take a look at the O4 Air Unit Lite. I think is what they're calling it, or is it just the standard? I don't know. But enough about that one, because that's back in Pennsylvania. We're here in Kentucky, again, Paducah, Kentucky. Nice little area, and I'm excited to be flying the Pavo 20 Pro with the DJI 04 Air Unit Pro on board. Since I am dealing with a daylight issue, I'm just gonna go ahead, put this thing in the air, put together a few shots for you here in Paducah, Kentucky, and we'll come back and talk a little bit about the 04 Air Unit and my takeaways from this powerful little camera system. Okay, so there's our first flight with the DJI 04 air unit happening right here again in Paducah, Kentucky. Just a few quick takeaways from this flight and from observing the footage after the fact. First of all, the Pavo 20 Pro is a great little flyer. So if you're relatively new to FPV, you're looking for something a little smaller format, a little lower risk, but still performs at a very high level for the class it falls into, look no further. This drone is fantastic. I cannot say enough good things about Beta FPV and some of their smaller Whoop drones. So kudos again to Beta FPV. But we're here talking about the 04 Air Unit, so I'll stop gushing over that. The first thing that I noticed when flying the 04 Air Unit is just how crispy the feed was in my goggle. The perspective that the 04 Air Unit's feed gave me was shocking. This is so good that when I go back to something that I had sort of become accustomed to and used to and actually liked quite a bit, uh, it was shell shock 
just how much different it was. So that's the first thing I noticed right off the bat. The second thing that I noticed in the footage was just the depth of color. You are working with 10-bit color as an option here. You can shoot in normal mode and in D-Log M, both of which offer you that 10-bit color profile. So really rich, vivid colors. Kind of hard to tell here in Kentucky because we are just coming out of winter. I guess we're still in winter, but we're on our way out. Uh, there's not a lot of leaves on the trees. And again, I'm sort of contesting here with a lack of daylight. So it, it didn't really give you a true look at just how colorful and vibrant the colors can be but i'll be doing a video about that in the future when i have a more opportune setting and a more opportune time of year to show you just how beautiful and magnificent the color depth on this drone is and speaking of d-log m we cannot discount how cool it is we can shoot with an fpv camera i'm talking an onboard vtx system something that's designed just to give you visibility while you're flying, we can shoot D-Log M, which is super flexible in post. It gives us the ability to work it into our workflows for our projects and make the color just match that much more to the rest of the footage that we have, especially when you consider DJI did release a Rec. 709 LUT for the D-Log M profile. So you apply that to this footage, and now all of a sudden, you've got really poppy footage coming off of a small format drone like this. Game changer, absolute game changer. And I'm not totally sure, I'll have to do some digging and get back to you on this, but I think the DJI ratcheted up their Rocksteady system, that image stabilization that's built into the actual camera system that allows you to just fly without having to worry about putting it through gyro flow or some other stabilization program. I noticed that the footage that I shot on Rocksteady was better than it had ever been. Now, part of that could be attributed to the aircraft and just how smooth and well-tuned it is. Part of it could be attributed to the fact that I'm not a terrible FPV pilot anymore, but I really think the credit goes to DJI and their Rocksteady system. Of course, you have a few different stabilization options for when you are flying and you just want the footage to be stabilized right off the camera. So whether you're looking for Rocksteady, Rocksteady Plus, Horizon Leveling, or Horizon Leveling Plus, or you're just going to raw dog it and you're just going to worry about stabilization later if you need it, it doesn't matter. You'll have usable footage right off the camera no matter how you want to present it. But I was really pleased with the quality of the stabilization that I got when using Rocksteady. Typically, I'm one of those guys that likes to just fly in a 4.3 format, 4K60, 2.7K60, whatever the scenario was or will be, and then just throw this through gyro flow. While I still lean towards that a little bit, I do see utilizations in the future where I need a quick turnaround. I don't have time to sit there, parse through the footage, pick out clips, stabilize them. I can just rely on Rocksteady because it has been tuned up so well. The only thing that I'm not real crazy about with the O4 Air Unit Pro is the size of the camera. Now, I know when you increase the sensor size, you're going to have to increase the camera body more likely than not, and that seems to be the case here. We're going from a half-inch CMOS sensor on the O3 Air Unit to a 1 over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor on the O4 Air Unit. That is equivalent to the Avada 2, to the Mini 3, to the Mini 4, and the Air 3 and the Air 3S's telephoto camera. So that sensor size is bigger than we've ever seen on an air unit of any type, and it really shows because it's really picking up a lot more data as you're flying around. That said, the inconvenience that it posed me is that I actually had to 3D print my own mounting bracket for the Pavo 20 Pro to accommodate the O4 air unit because the stock mounting unit only accommodates up to the O3 air unit. It's just small enough to fit in the stock mounting unit for the Pavo 20 Pro. This one is custom 3D printed. If you couldn't tell, it's printed in red TPU. And I actually had to also snip the front of the guard on the camera off. I know that opens the camera up to the potential of damage if I crash. That's something I'm willing to risk right now until I wait for my UV filters to come in for the O4 air unit. But in the meantime, I'll just have to be very, very careful that I don't crash it because there is nothing protecting the lens on this camera as it stands. The reason that I cut the front of the mount off, the guards for the lens off, is because I could pick them up in wide footage. So when I was shooting in wide so that I could stabilize the footage in gyro flow, it would pick up the red protective brackets on the end. And I just didn't like that. So I thought, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go for it. We're going to see what happens. Worst case scenario, I got to shell out another 230 bucks. And I guess that brings me to the only other complaint I have about the O4 Air Unit Pro. It is a little pricier than we've seen in the past with the DJI Air Units. We're looking at $230 for the O4 Air Unit. Now, for somebody like me that uses this professionally, not really that big of a bite. Not going to pretend it's not a lot of money. It is expensive. But for the quality that you get from 
from this camera system, it is well worth the investment. So as long as you protect yourself, you take out the, the insurance, the DJI Care Refresh, you ensure the aircraft, the fuselage properly, and you protect the camera itself, you should be good to go and not have to worry too much about your investment, but it is a little bit on the pricey side. Again, you get a much higher level of quality, so it's worth the investment in my eyes, but some people may scoff at that. And if you do find yourself scoffing at that, they do have the O4 Air Unit, which is like the O4 Air Unit standard, or I, I'm calling it the O4 Air Unit Lite, if that's not what they've officially named it, I don't know. I haven't gotten mine yet. It's sitting at home in Pennsylvania waiting for me. Uh, but if you do want something a little lower priced, I think it's $110 for the standard O4 air unit. You just don't get the beefed up sensor size. I think it's a half inch CMOS sensor on the O4 air unit standard, and it doesn't have all of the bells and whistles that the O4 air unit pro has. I know this wasn't the ideal test because of the pressure I had with daylight and because it's not all that vibrant and colorful here at the end of January in Paducah, Kentucky, uh, but I did the best with what I had. I can't help with the DJI released this camera system in January, so I don't have a lot of options when it comes to beautiful settings unless I want to shell out money for a plane ticket to somewhere tropical, which I don't have that kind of money because I just bought the O4 Air unit. Do what you can with what I've given you. I hope it's enough to at least cut your teeth a little bit and get some exposure to the footage that comes off the O4 Air unit. Look at it this way. It's a test in less than ideal conditions when it comes to vibrancy, daylight, etc. You get to see with your own eyes what I see for the very first time using this camera system. What did you think? Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up icon down below. It helps me out a lot. Helps get this video out into the algorithm to more viewers like yourself. If you really like this video, you love drone content, shop by drones, about drones, and for drone pilots, my friend, this is the channel for you. Make sure you get subscribed if you haven't already. And while you're at it, hit the bell icon too. You'll get a notification every time I post a new video. Until next time, I'm Chris, the drone geek from Paducah, Kentucky with the DJI 04 air unit. I'm out of here. See ya. Yo, yo, what you say? Steady screaming, yo, no rocket polo. We